something also. And, and I like to make this statement that experience is not what happens to you. Experience is what you do with what happened to you. And I repeat, experience is not what happened to you. Experience is what you do with what happened to you. So because we had planted some years back and the produce came out during uh, the fasting, the Muslim fasting, um, we lost a lot of money because the product we produced, the farm produce we produced, did not have an appeal during that period. So we checked the calendar for the year. When is Easter? When is uh, fasting? When is Ramadan? When is Christmas? We now plotted our operations around those periods. And we said, if they lock down, the fast Muslim fasting will make a lot of money because there will not be produce. So we went into production of watermelons because it's a major product. And we did quite some huge margins um, around it. So the value chain of, you may not produce, you may go into this value chain. And this is where the money is going forward. This is, these are areas that are not saturated. So in the, you, you have, called upstream, you have the cultivation and you have livestock production. So many people want to, they basically want to go to the land. Um, and I would advise that you really go into the, this area, especially if you don't have time. If you don't have time, this is not for you. This is for people who are in the rural communities or people who can dash and come back in, in a short space. So cultivation, livestock, that means you're planting rice, tomatoes, you're closer to the soil, you're rearing peas, uh, cattle, name it. But let me say this, during COVID, especially post-COVID, now you've been hearing, that the sector has been disrupted. So you've been hearing that, oh, we produce a lot is wasting, so don't go into production. Post-COVID, we need more production. But we just don't need any type of production. We need quality produce, niche market. What we find in the sector now is almost everybody will do rice, cassava, tomato. We need focus. There's what is called die vision. So the moment you lose focus on one thing, you will find somebody selling corn abroad, only corn, not just any corn, dry corn. So we need to focus. Post COVID, we would need people who will be producing some specific produce to some specific specification. I tell you, the multinationals, uh, Nigeria Berries, Guinness, Nestle, all of them, when we had the last, um, like two years ago, when the price of dollar went up, many of them changed their policy, five their policy to begin to look inward. And I can tell you with COVID, they are looking more inward. And so we need to pay attention. Now, the midstream where you have the processing, manufacturing, packaging, tool fabrication and design, this is where bulk of the money will be going to. And value addition, um, like I say, doesn't really require any major equipment. Value addition is as simple as changing the state. So what do I mean? If you buy paper, you want to mix stew, and you blend it, you've added value. So we have companies packaging stew now. We have many people. There's, there's, a, there's a young lady in front of UBA head office in Nigeria. She sells snails, some parboiled, some fried, some peppered, and, and, and she's doing some huge numbers. And most of those things, we underestimate them, but they are doing good numbers. So distribution, which is the downstream. Um, this is very technical uh, distribution. During COVID, the lockdown, I'm sure almost everybody at some point in time needed something. This has just blown open. But not every opportunity is your opportunity. Not every. Not everything that looks like an opportunity is something you should go into. I know you've heard that statement, but I've seen that in the agri sector. People just want to do what everybody is doing, just like the pure water business. Distribution is huge. If you stay in an estate, you should be looking at how to set up 
a, a business around that. And you don't need any brick and mortar thing. Just get some data and get people to order and get other people to fulfill that order. Convenience is huge. People don't want to go out during COVID. And I tell people it's better to keep fit. When you keep fit, you keep safe. So many people will be looking into that, but it's a bit technical. But the export and import, most of the things that we bring in will not be coming in again. And many of the things we're seeing will need to go out. There's a huge demand on Ugu. And I met a woman who, for about 30 years, she's been taking a window that's the green to UK. And there's so many people looking for people who will niche. And so if you say Ugo, they don't want five varieties of Ugo. They want one direct variety of Ugo. So you need to pay attention to that. So I'll quickly move into why agri-business, agri-projects fail and how to avoid this pitfall. Because Every national challenge births new opportunity. We are all on Zoom now. The national or the global challenge has birthed Zoom. Zoom is now what all of us use. So the agri sector will also open up quite a lot of opportunities. And you need to know, I've narrowed down, there are actually five, but I've narrowed down to two two major reasons why people lose money and how to avoid them. And the first one is what I call opportunity fever. At some point in time, if you are African, you are likely to have had fever or malaria. And what happens is you just want to get out of bed. You can't wait for this to go. And how does that apply to the agri sector? What we do like governments is, Rice, 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 rice. You are hearing a lot of rice. And so you think that production of rice is where the money is. And with opportunity fever, you want to do it alone. You're, you're, not, one, you're not willing to share. Or you share, but you run blindly into it because you think it's an opportunity. Uh, in Yoruba, they say, that means uh, what you think is the right part is not where the part is. So opportunity fever, I've seen many captains of industries, many of the people who will salute by the roadside come into the agricultural sector because they've excelled in other areas. They come in, I've seen 300 acres, 500 acres rot away. I've seen people who go and produce cassava just to find out and they want to export. And for them to just find out the price at the export market internationally, is actually lower than the price they will set locally. And so we need to take, pay attention to this opportunity fever. Many fall victims of this. So government will say, this is the next big thing, and we rush. The question you should be asking is, what is the value chain beyond production? So people selling inputs, before you go to production, you pay them. What other chains remain? Like for rice now, um, except you are close to a meal, production may not be the right way to go. But if you are close to a meal, demand will be more than they'll be looking for you. Another is what I call market amputation. And I decided to use this because this is old, where you find people educated, professionals who have excelled in different areas, they first go and produce or they go and buy to sell. They don't pay attention to what does the market want? What quantity can the market absorb? How do they want it? What are the cartels there? The principalities and powers operating there. And I use the word principalities and powers because the principality has nothing to do with the, uh, the dark kingdom, the negative spiritual world. The principality is just somebody that has authority over a domain. Who has authority in that market? If you don't understand those dynamics, you will bring your produce to market 
and they will tell you to wait. I normally would share um, a story of someone who came from Germany uh, under uh, Governor Fashola's administration. If they are not related, but the guy came from Germany, produced corn, had a bumper harvest, took it to Mount Well, uh, Ketu. While he was trying to sell, they were pricing him lower than what he was seeing them sell. He got upset, and what did he do? He packed, like, they were pricing like 5,000, and they were pricing him at 1,500, because they know that he could not take it back. But fortunately for him, he brought it in a vehicle. So what he did was, instead of you cheating me, I would rather throw it in a lagoon, went on Todd Milan Bridge, and the staff, they offloaded it there. And that is what is happening. The market will amputate the hopes. Years back, I produced um, corn, and I've produced corn for a long time now, almost 19 years. And we produce it in Korodu and Epe. We produce it in the dry season. So we produce in the same. We did about 150 acres irrigated. And the early part, we normally will grow some to push the market. So we brought it to Ojo Eleba, Suruleri, Axis, Lagos, Nigeria to test the market. And they told us there that we had used human blood to produce corn, that corn does not come out January, February, because that was their exposure. It doesn't come out till April, May. And everywhere we went, they, were, they told us that, ah, abomination. And we lost the corn because our cost of production was high. So guess what? When we're producing again, we now produce small. We brought the, the market people to check it. We took them on, a, uh, on uh, let me use the word, on a trip to the farm, and they saw it. And they said, oh, it's possible. And they now reached out to their people. But I tell you, I've seen many people. Many people lose their gratuity. Many people lose their retirement plan, all because of markets. How do we approach agribusiness? There are agribusiness mindsets to profitability. There are mindsets. One, we need to begin to look at commodity versus brands. Post COVID, we would need more brands than commodity. And what do I mean by brand and commodity? This is commodity. I'm sure the average woman uh, can identify with these pictures. This is our typical market or the one close to our homes. However, these are brands. It's still tomatoes. This uh, Captain brand is a Nigerian product, a young guy packaging stew, and this is another um, foreign product. But guess what? The likes of the big chains are looking at brands now. So you must be able to take commodity to brand, but you don't have to go into farming. You just have to aggregate. So in anything you want to do, you must brand. I recall the story of uh, No Left by Mrs. Mirbok, where talking about how she packaged a moi moi in nylons, branded nylons. As simple as branded nylons, this will be crucial going forward. Now, to the left is the ideal way of moving bananas. Now, this is like Honduras. And I, I, I tell people what we call bini, bini or a banana is still the same that you see here. There's no difference. It's called dwarf cavendish. Same variety. If you're taking bananas in Europe, in US, in developed countries, it's the same banana in Ore that we see, but the difference is handling. So adapted that you see is how they've just added value by transporting it. But let me show you this. This is what we have in Nigeria. We carry it on motorbikes, and I'm sure you've seen a lot, especially this vehicle. It will never look like what you will see abroad. It's primarily handling. So when you're looking into the value chain, handling, as simple as just handling, you would get it right. So packaging, packaging agri-produce or a value chain, so which could be creating cartons. I know sometime there was a training uh, in TVWF for some people on packaging. 
We need, it's a value chain. Don't go into production if you've acquired that skill. Just provide the adequate packaging and I can tell you, you'll be smiling to the bank. Processing. So we have quite a lot of people now looking into that juice, uh, smoothie. Many people are getting uh, more lifestyle, uh, health conscious. And so this is going to be huge, very huge, but the sustainability is engaging rural farmers. Like you see the people on the um, current pineapples, this, for you to be sustainable, you need to have quality produce. So aggregation is key. Now, so many people talk about value addition. So if you check uh, Proverbs 12, 27 says the slothful man does not catch his game or roast it once he kills it. But the diligent man gets precious possessions. 12, 24 says the hand of the diligent will rule, but the slothful will be put to forced labor. So this is just value addition. So if you just carry your tomato or buy tomato and sell like that without adding value, that's what the Bible says. It says the, slot, the, the slothful man does not catch his game and roast it, meaning add value. When you roast, you can preserve. Preservation is part of value chain. When you roast, you can export. When you roast, which is adding value, you can command better price. And when you also roast, which is value addition, you are not in a hurry to sell your farm produce or to sell whatever you have. That value addition. And if there's anything I know the platform of TBWF, BBWM is that value addition of excellence. You cannot have the mindset of excellence and operate in the local uh, market. Current challenges and opportunities in this space. Logistics. Many people are finding it difficult to move their farm produce or connect even distribution. So let's say you want to do an estate, you need vehicles to be able to do that. Some people are, have that knowledge. If you are in the logistics or haulage business, you should, as a matter of urgency, be looking into this. Um, if, you are, if you belong to groups, you should be looking at looking into this value chain of getting vehicles, or these um, heavy equipment to move this produce. Inputs, seeds, fertilizers, chemicals. Some farmers will have issues this year because of agric inputs. And I can tell you, if you can send an email and you can read and write, there are many Asian companies looking for representations or representatives in Nigeria. If you can send email and you can read, this you can do. Asia, Europe, COVID now is going to create a barrier between for people coming to the country. They will just want to know people who have an idea and all you need is an idea and research. And I can tell you this huge market of seed, fertilizers, chemicals is waiting for you. Even as a broker, you just know the people who have it and you can communicate, that's going to be huge. Now, mechanization. So, we would be needing quite a lot in the value chain of farm inputs. Now, I've said, I'm seeing a lot about farm inputs because it starts from there. If you can find out how it works there, it's going to be easy for you to find the, the space that you can operate in. So small inputs, because very soon you're going to be hearing on the news that we don't have enough tractors, we don't have enough this and that, please look for something small. Most of the farm holdings is within that small space and you can trade in it. If you are privileged to travel as often as you want or you have a visa, make sure post COVID, when you go on vacation next, your vacation puts the rest package on, but puts the business cap on because this is driving business women fellowship. There's something you would see and as simple as open my eyes, Lord, you will get the instruction. Now, value addition in terms of processing, commercial processing. Now, we have like tomatoes. 
we have cassava. Most of the multinationals now are looking for people who can at least add value to an extent. And I know Nestle is doing that a lot. So there are many companies who produce a component of what is used in their big product, in their final produce or final products to final consumers. So you can be in that chain of adding that initial uh, value. Access to markets is where a majority have issues. Um, last Saturday, we brought together uh, all the Southwest Commissioners of Agriculture to have a conversation around regional cooperation. And access to markets is a major issue. And let me, let me shed a little light into how food goes expensive in Lagos. So when farmers are bringing their produce to Lagos, if there's glut, that means there's more than enough at some point in time, what do you find? You find the merchants just put a call through and say around MFM, they should stop the truck, create artificial scarcity. And when there's scarcity, they bring it in. However, what causes the scarcity? Is it that Lagosians have reduced their intake? No, it's the space in the market cannot accommodate more. So Lagos State Government is trying to decentralize and they need you and I in your estate to form like associations to be able to push. The moment you can take the produce from, instead of going to mile 12, into your estate, into your community, you would be leveraging margins in terms of pricing. Now, the prices, well, uh, I won't stay too long on this, but this is just to let you know how the price of um, food is increasing. Um, if my friend, uh, Babajide Ogusonwo, the channel's analyst, had a program with us in March, and he came up to tell us that 60 or 64% of our income goes on food in Nigeria. It was alarming. 64%, about 64% we spend on food. So what that means is that we will spend money and we need to pay attention to that. So Lagos State Government is putting together a huge rice uh, facility and it's 70% com about completed and they will need from nylons to packaging, to jute bags, to people buying broken rice, to people buying the, the peel of rice. The value chain is huge. It's projected at about 300,000 jobs. And I'm not putting this out because government is saying it. I'm, I've worked a bit on it. I grew up um, with my dad having 750 acres of rice in Ekiti. So I have a working knowledge of this. This will be completed and there's a gap in this for supply. They've not gotten any of the supplies yet. So if you have a network, please plan to leverage. So how do you leverage on this sector? How? Because all the English I've been speaking is how. I would ask you to access divine insight. This is the most important thing that you can do. Ask God. But when I say ask God, ask God, but don't stay there. Use what I call Apostle Paul's approach. Apostle Paul was praying and it was moving. Bible says he attempted to go to a place, he said the Holy Spirit restricted him. He attempted another one until light came. So please ask. And I say, you farm by revelation. And this does not have to do with farming alone. You get into the agri space because the agri space is not like any other space. The first thing God did after creating humans the, the creation. Bible says, and the Lord planted a vineyard. And the Lord planted a vineyard. So the first activity of agribusiness it was God that did it. See, the pandemic around us now has created a plain level field. For Joseph, when there was a national disaster, or which eventually became a global disaster, he gave him the opportunity to rise. God said to me years ago, 
He said, when you have national disasters, that is my opportunity to showcase my chosen one. So there are many chosen ones listen, listening to me today that would arise in this season. The pandemic is not a challenge for you. The pandemic is an opportunity for you to rise if you can access revelation. Revelation backs insight. And insight gives you, it makes you prosper. So you need to pay attention as simple as I do every year. Lord, what will sell? There was a particular year I said, Lord, kilomata, Lord, and God said, epalomata, meaning granite will sell. And that was the main thing we did that year. And it sold like wildfire. I want to encourage you that if whatever you think of, take for instance, Gary, as simple as Gary is, we still bring Gary from Benin Republic. We bring Gary in from Ghana. Two years ago at the exhibition in Lagos, a man was bringing Gary practically every day from Ghana because he was selling off and people was, were queuing up. Gary, that you think is common. So how is ask God? There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. I'm not spiritualizing this, but I can tell you this is what has worked for me. We have all the sweet corn seeds in this country today because I asked God in January, what should I do? How should I approach this pandemic? And he told me what to do. During the um, 2015 uh, riot strike, fuel scarcity, early that year, when people were joining, my mentors were joining the campaign at Ojota, they called me to join. I asked God, Lord, should I join them? And the night I had a dream. I saw a new portion of the massive land that we use. And when that portion, I went, I, I saw that you will use your hand to just dig the ground and you'll find water coming out instead of using irrigation. I left Lagos like 6 p.m. I didn't get to Ibadan, uh, to Isain, till like 3 a.m. I went on Okada. But well, guess what? I went to that location and I found the land. And everybody was asking me, so where we should have spent close to about 2 million when we were doing like 200,000 because the land was there. Don't join what others are doing. You need spiritual insight. And I'm paying attention to this because agribusiness is different, especially if you're going to production. Whatever you want to do, agribusiness, you need spiritual insight. You ask for direction. Don't just jump into things because God shows you in the agri sector. So there was a year um, I, I was praying and God showed me a land. It was as if I was watching television. I wasn't sleeping. And I saw massive land. I made an inquiry. I saw the land. I went there. It was as I saw it. And I jumped. I used experience, my knowledge. I used, I jumped in and we, we had spent about 30 million on it, and we ran into muddy waters. And while I was praying, Lord, what happened? What did I do wrong? You told me, I saw it, and he said to me, I showed you, you did not wait for strategy. And I, so I got, I got angry. I like, Why couldn't you tell me? He said, I tried to tell you, but you used the experience and knowledge. So it's crucial that ask for strategy. How should I go? That's what we know David for. David will always ask. He never took anything for granted. When he was to be crowned as king, he asked, where should I go? God told him where he should go. And he said, which city? And he said, go to Hebron. So I want to appeal to you. Please, because we have given our lives to Christ. And if you have not, please consider today. There is always direction. God is speaking you need to hear. How do you start? I would recommend you read two books. I read it every year, January and June, written by Dr. Sam Adeyemi. It's called Start With What You Have and Ideas Rule the World. In the last five years, I have bought two in January, two in June, and ideas flow. The book increased about 300% in price. And when I was to buy it, I said, Lord, let me see the value of this new price. And on my trip to India, I read the book 
and I actually got the value of what we'll be implementing in July from that book that I've been reading for five straight years, twice a year. So start with what you have, read those two books, and I believe God will give you insight. How do you start? You must have a vision. I know we are used to that, but what is the vision? Is it that you want to produce corn to feed pigs and use the flesh of the pigs as sausage? So your corn is not to sell. Your corn is to feed pigs. Then how do you plan? And that's where you need to go and Google and research scenario planning, paint scenarios. Engage the people who have been there. Please don't think you know it because you've grown with the system. You must know the process. You must get a coach. You must get an advisor. I know these are things being emphasized on TVWF, but please don't assume you've succeeded, you've excelled in another field and you can just cross. Please pay attention to that. Get into a community. You need a community. Don't plan to do it alone. Try to engage two, three, four people. They say good, two good eggs are better than one. And, and what two good eggs are better than one. And so you see uh, a lot of crowdfunding platforms springing up. I was privileged to co-found the leading one um, out of that business now, in, uh, out of that company. So I won't mention names, but I designed it. And I can tell you is the way to go. So instead of one of you going to face the challenge alone, three, four of you can come together. So if you're putting, let's say 10 million and 10 of you come together, that means you'll be taking a risk with one, one million as against risking 10 million. And so when you've tested the water and you need to scale, what you can do also is while that scale, all of you have some experience and exposure and you can scale it. And moreover, 10 of you cannot be uh, lawyers, bankers. You would have lawyer, banker, different exposure, different experiences that you can put together to ensure that this uh, value chain does well. Now, land. Invest in land, please. The asset of tomorrow is land. Buy land if you don't have time. Buy agric land because there's a 20 year principle that God shared with me years ago. The 20 year principle 20 years ago, there was no downgrade. 20 years before then, we had no Ferrandes, MK or Abiola. There are no way to. Moe before was Bush. Aripo was Bush about eight, nine years ago. You can't buy land there without 10 million, 7 million. Leki Aja was Morocco 20 years ago. 20 years from now, where would, the, where would the development go? With the world challenge on agriculture, rural lands will become premium. Buy rural lands, do CO4 or registered survey. These are assets you can use when investors come and they want to get into operation. And guess what? They would, your land will become equity. There's someone that was that told me, a friend of mine, he slept and God showed him 24 acres of land. And guess what? He tried to find out, he got the land, he bought 24 acres for 6 million naira. That's about 10 years ago. So he bought 24 acres for about 6 million naira. But guess what? About a year later, each plot it was offered 2 million naira each because it's between Chris Land, the proposed university, and like three universities. And so there's a scramble for his land. So please, land, you can't get it wrong. The real estate that is real is land. Um, when you're trying to get the land, if the land has water, the better for you. So it's crucial. If the land has water, please get land. It's very, very crucial. And please, I would also advise, people talk about tech. People talk about a lot of things. But there's nothing you can think of in the agri-sector 
that is not profitable. When I say there is nothing, I mean there is nothing. There's aggregation, the value chain of aggregation. There is nothing you can think of. Even packaging ogi, packaging dry fufu, packaging will be huge. You know, and, and because the reason why you need to even pray is come, the, the stem of cassava, that's the cassava stick, is even more profitable planting for stick than planting for cassava. Very, very important. So please pay attention to land. Land is going to be very, very premium. And finally, um, let me see. okay. Finally, I would want to say that please consider working with each other. Consider working with each other because that will work. That is the next phase of things in the country. I would wrap up with services. Services, but it's not in my slide. The Holy Spirit just brought it into my heart. Services. Now, what do I mean by services? When Jesus was to pay tax, he sent Peter to go to the river and catch fish. So Peter went to the river and caught the fish. He did not send Thomas. He sent Peter because Peter had the background of fishing. So what you have acquired experience in, engineer, uh, fashion person, uh, marketer, brand expert, whatever you've developed expertise in in five to 10 years, the agri sector is going to open big time. So you need to begin to look at it. I told a friend of mine when we're in LBS, he's an accountant, I said to him, go and begin to niche around account, farm accounting so that when people need, they will find you. Re architects, they are architects that only design farms. So whatever your background is, is the value chain you should first look at because that is what God, will, what is in your hand is what God will first ask. So if you love fashion, there are seeds. Now go to Nigeria, um, Nigeria Conservation Foundation in Lekki. There are seeds that they used to make button. Look into your past, reflect, and, and that's the thing. Reflect into your past what you used to do or what you've acquired skill in. And so I normally would pray now for uh, wisdom and skillful wisdom, godly wisdom and skillful wisdom, because you've acquired some wisdom over years. Don't dump it to go into the agri sector, but look at what can complement it because services is where the money, the real money is going to be in services. What you have been doing that you can bring into the agri sector. If you are in real estate, look at real estate. If you are in tourism, uh, you run a travel agency, you should be looking at agri tourism. This is huge. If you're an engineer, be looking at how to make all these hand tools. So whatever, whatever your profession is, I even say, go to the chat box, you know, chat whatever, say something about what you have experience in and, you know, let somebody also, let everybody just say something because it's very crucial because if you take this action, it helps you, whatever comes to your mind now, put it down, think about it. Most of the things I do now, I grow corn for years. I talk for a living for free, but now I'm being paid heavy. And I will close with this. Because you have developed expertise, because God has called you and told you that this is where you should place B, does not mean that a new season has not opened. And what do I mean by that? I was on the farm in Shekwetari years back, and we worked so much that I bought Ekoa Nakara. I don't know how they call Eko in English, but Akara is being scaped. And I was eating in the car at the roundabout, and I slept off in the car, like 9 p.m. Somebody woke me up, which is the Holy Spirit, of course, like 2 a.m., and said, read the Bible and pray. I didn't feel like reading. I was saying, Lord, tomorrow. But 
stepped left and I was reading. I read Psalms and it says, God is able to realign and realign the person that has missed the step. And I said, I didn't miss my step. And I just got like a beating inside that. Listen, eventually I said, Lord, have I missed my step? Please redirect me. He says, you will be in the cycle, circle of blessings. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me after about 15 minutes praying in tongues. He said, your next season is not farming. Your next level is not dealing with that. Your next level is talking, the training, the talking aspect of agribusiness. And for two, three years, I stayed with my farm because that is what God said, which is what God said and what God is saying. They are two different things. So how did I step into the talking? And now I still deal with land. I just don't deal directly. We funded a project, just a narrow street. It can't take two cars. The first by the left, we funded. We operated by the right. When it was almost harvest time, our laborers, 21 of them from Niger, they ran away. It was the farmers we funded that made money. We gave them loans. Some of them 250, some of them 150, but the list of them turned 250 to 500,000 in a space of 75 days. We advised, we bought everything. But we, that we put 7 million, we lost everything because God was no longer there. So I want to ask you today, what are you doing that the Holy Spirit have been putting in your mind to diversify or to look into a new direction? It may be in agriculture, and it may not be in agriculture or agribusiness. But please, pay attention to the promptings of the Holy Spirit now, because when there is national disaster, that is when God showcases his children. Thank you for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much, sir. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have really learned from Sea Tree, and we have so many questions to ask you. So many questions to ask you. I'd like to start by you mentioned for us that uh, you said something about scenario planning. Yes. Can you, can you please explain what you mean by scenario planning, sir? Okay, so scenario planning is just looking at what can go wrong. As simple as that. What can go wrong? And so when you begin to ask what can go wrong, so before lockdown, if the lockdown, there won't be movement. So we need vehicle to put it. Um, what if I want to sell and there's nobody to buy? Then I need to do uh, social media marketing. You add it. So you just do all the scenarios. What if food cannot come from the north? Because we are heavily focused on north. How can I get into the southwest? So you begin to look at that. That's basically just scenario planning. And everything you find, what if this does not work? What if, if you ask five what ifs, you will get a plan that works. Thank you very much, sir. I have another question here with me as we continue with our question and answer session. Someone is asking, I am in agriculture, food processing chain value. I want mm -hmm. to build a greenhouse and don't know which to go with bell peppers and tomatoes. Can you advise me? So you are a processor. You may not need to go into production. You may need to go and familiarize with environments where they produce and do what is called backward integration, where you fund some of their inputs and you partner with them. What you need is access to raw material consistently and a certain quality. If you go into greenhouse, by the way, greenhouse is not, greenhouse can produce commercially what you will use to process. Greenhouse is meant for fresh markets, people who want to buy. So already you are looking in the wrong direction and that would what, what I call shadow mission. You would move away from, you know, the shadow is always by your side. So you will move away from your shadow, from the main thing and follow the shadow. So it's good for you to focus on the raw material as against going into production. 
when you start production, you will be monitoring people and it's enough headache monitoring the guy, the people working with you. So please focus on sourcing. Thank you very much, sir. I have another question here from one of us. She's asking, how do we handle NAFDAQ when it comes to packaging products? Mm. Okay, so NAFDAQ is tricky. NAFDAQ is a bit tricky. Now, um, I can tell you, it's not that friendly here because I've seen it in other countries. So you need a three bedroom flat that you would, you know, put into different sections and co. But I would say when you are starting, NAFDAQ is not looking for people starting, depending on the scale. So start, get the market, and now look for NAFDAQ. I can tell you there is whatever scale you want to start with, you can still do something big with it before you go to NAVDAC. I have started many projects that didn't involve NAVDAC. One of my products, our cash cow, we don't have NAVDAC number. So what, what NAVDAC says is, if you're putting on a shelf and the consumer is not contacting you, in contact with you, you need NAVDAC number. But direct sales, please Google direct sales marketing. If you do direct sales, you will go under the radar. But please, make sure your product is certified by you. Meets NAFDAQ regulations. It's just that the structure is what you don't have. But I tell you, if you can afford it, and it's not so huge also, if you can afford it, please go for it because it gives you better leverage. Thank you very much for that, sir. Well noted. I have a question from one of us here. She said they have... Um, a waterlogged land. And when you mentioned that um, when you want to buy a land, if you find a land that has water, it's an added advantage. What would you say about this for a waterlogged land? Is it an added okay. advantage? No. So a waterlogged land limits you. A land that has, um, we call it um, unseasonal water or perennial water, that is land that does, the stream does not dry up. So when you have waterlogged land, it the beautiful thing about waterlogged land is it gives you the opportunity to operate in the dry season where you will not be spending the money others will be spending in terms of diesel equipment, but it limits you during the rainy season. And that is it. And, and also, if you want to go to production, one acre, two acre, five acres, though you can't do anything sustainable with those ones. You will spend more on logistics. But if the one acre, five acre is close to where you are, where you where you reside, then fine. Except you want to do the hydroponics, greenhouses on one acre, two acres, it should also be close to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Still on the question and answer session, someone is asking, can you recommend partners that can fund backward integration? Oh, yes. Um, there are a lot of um, organizations now looking to funding backward integration. Uh, but many of them, if you go the institution, institutionalized uh, organization route, you may not qualify. They will ask for so much. But if you reach out, um, our organization can help you. We also do that at Farm Credit, um, look into that backward integration funding. Uh, but you, will you must show that you know your onions well. But I tell you that a lot of people looking at putting money in anything that makes economic sense. So the stocks are not doing well at the moment. Um, the, the money market is also not doing fantastic. The real estate is not doing like it used to. So people have cash. So they are willing to put money in any project that makes economic sense. Thank you very much, sir. Now, someone is asking, she wants to trade in seedlings, like you mentioned, and um, she would like to know where she can get seedlings from in Lagos. Okay, that's, you're giving me opportunity to market. Uh, we sell seeds, fertilizers, and so we have hybrids. So um, even if you're not getting from us, please look for hybrids. 
because climate change is a crucial factor now and hybrids is, and they are different from genetically modified hybrid is just you find if the husband is fair the wife is dark and you have like a chocolate child so the hybrid just speaks disease resistivity maybe the rainfall is too much it, you know it can withstand the, the the pressure but i can tell you for free if you google where you can buy seeds in lagos you will not find you will find one person who is selling who really does not know about the seeds uh, like recently i wanted to buy some that we didn't have and the person that the number is on facebook just told me they just gave me to sell though <laughs> and i'm like so how does that person relate? So yes, we can. If we don't have, we can through our network help you at no cost to you. Okay. Thank you very much, African farmer. Now someone is asking. Currently, she does um, ice. She produces ice on a large scale, and she's asking ice. is ice, ice, yes, ice for preservation. Cues. Yes. Okay. She says, is it relevant to agri sector and in what area, please? Hmm. So ice, except for fish, um, ice mean, okay, so let, let me say this. In developed countries, no, not in developed countries, I've seen it in Ghana, in Togo, in Burkina Faso, I've seen all those things. Like when you harvest some crops like bananas, they put it in cold water to reduce the heat. That's what is called field heat, you know? Uh, so they need to reduce that heat for it to have a longer shelf life. So if your ice is close to a rural community or a farm community, then the ice would you know, come in handy. But if it is not there, you may prayerfully consider relocating that business to those places because very soon, business will not be as usual again, like the new normal will be quality. People care about what they eat now. Thank you very much, sir. Now, someone is asking, you spoke about um, nylon when you were discussing about the value chain. So somebody would like mm -hmm. to ask that you should please further expatiate on that, the use of nylon. Yes. Yes. So um, a lot of, especially tree crops, cocoa, rubber, oil palm, cashew, all of them must be raised in nylons. And that's one type of nylon. Because I use the word must, they must be raised in nylons before it is transplanted, which is a value chain. Yes, nylon is a value chain, but even raising those, buying the seeds and raising them so people just come and buy from you in another value chain. So that nylon, they buy and we're not really having people in that sector now. But beyond that, packaging nylons, if you Google online for tomatoes, for corn, for a lot of products, those quality of nylons we don't have here. If you want to do what is called vacuum sealing, vacuum sealing is a machine, you put your food in it, it sucks out the hair, and it can be refrigerated for six months, and when you open it, it still comes out like the day one you put it there. And sometimes for like three months, you don't have to refrigerate. Those quality of nylons, they're not available. So my advice is, what will people want that they don't have now? That's that aspect of nylon and that aspect of agri that you should go into. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Now, someone is asking, she currently runs a travels and tours company she that's the industry she belongs and you mentioned um agri tourism she would like you to please share more enlightenment as regards that and how can she go about it now so many nigerians especially executives you have the middle and upper class looking into various agri businesses that they can go they are in that explorative stage they just want to see to know what to do now you can package tours for them. Take for instance, IIT is in Ibado. You can write them, there's an amount they will charge per person, you factor it into yours and organize the logistics. You already know 
that sector, but just pay attention to agri. So you can do that. Well, post COVID now, that's going to be big for tomatoes, for for tomatoes, for integrated farms. So some may want to go into pre It's good that you visit an average of seven value chains that you're looking at. Seven of those businesses because it helps you to foundate. You what you see here, you are you adopt, you adapt. At the end of the day, you come up with something that is workable. So look at areas that people are looking at. If you go the, if you see the number of people looking for poultry, package or basso farms, chief farms, and all these other farms, package going there, taking them round. They already have those structures. You just plug into it. It's one of going, it's one of the sectors that's going to be the biggest agri tourism. As simple as that. Google those farms or send us an email. We would help you facilitate that. But many people want to go abroad. You know, we like to go abroad to see this thing. So like they are planting uh, their banana estates in Ghana, in Burkina, that you can take people, it will wow them and they will want to go into it. But also be also prepare that after that tour, you want to make, the speaker yesterday spoke about consultancy. You want to pack it phase two. When they come back, you make money before they go, while they are there, and phase two, collaborate with people that can help them so that you make a broker's fee on that. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I still have more questions coming in. Someone is asking here that you should please shed more light on exportation of Ugu vegetables. Mm. Okay, so um, to export any of these vegetables, you actually have to pay attention to uh the, the travel time so any country especially if it is fresh any country that you won't get in five hours the, you know dubai uk any country you won't get there may not be advisable but i tell you that it's better to start with liaison with people in the uk and co to supply them initially because that helps you to be able to navigate how the business is run. And along the line, you can now decide to begin to do it yourself. So, but support the existing systems so that you know the bottlenecks. And after you've identified the bottlenecks, then you can move into it. But be sure that you have one variety. It's not that they say, oh, uh, Igbo Ugu, Yoruba Ugu, Aosa Ugu. If you don't know the source of your seed, you are in for a challenge. But if you can trace it, I many you must be willing to pay premium for seeds. Once you know that I only have one variety, then you, you can do that. But you need to also involve the Nigerian plant quarantine. They, are, they have regional offices. They would advise on how to produce to meet that export standard. Because before it leaves the country, they would check. So if you get them involved at the beginning during the production process, it's going to be easy because they've been involved in the process. Don't mind the amounts you will pay. It, and it's not expensive, but you need to get them, Nigerian Plant Quarantine, involved for you to be able to take advantage. Thank you very much. And please remember, sorry, please remember this is Brexit. So the UK, United Kingdom is looking for opportunities in Nigeria. And so we need to pay attention. And especially many of you, we have the largest population in, in United Kingdom, as in Nigeria. So they're looking at what can we can do to keep the money flowing in and out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Still have questions coming in. Someone is asking here that do you need to do a soil test to know the type of um, what you can plant in a particular area? Do you need to do a soil test? And that what is your suggestion mm. about someone considering the upstream 
upstream activity, cultivation and location? So um, best practice is that you conduct a soil test. That's best practice. It's a bit expensive, but it's best practice, especially if you have exports in view or you want to sell to the niche market, uh, to the upper class, which is always better because most of them don't want to die at all. You know? So what happens is they, they're healthy, they are very health conscious and they are willing to pay for anyone who has put in that extra time. So soil test is good because I, I had a client, in fact, I had two, who had an oil palm plantation, about 400 acres, oil and gas about to retire. And I met the person and I said, I will not take up your consultancy if we don't do a soil test. And it's due for retirement like two years. The oil palm should be producing the year, uh, that year. And he said, what happens if I didn't do it? I asked him about soil structure and profile. He said, what will happen? I said, when your oil palm gets to five to seven years, when it should be increasing yield and you can retire on, it will play too. It will not go up, it will just stay there and you are likely to have an issue. So I said, what's the solution? I said, package it for somebody else who will buy it. And the man said, no, I can't face that reality because if the profile comes negative, my health can crash. But for another client, he had bought the land, they had started planting, they were digging in his presence and he found out that the land was not good. That's 150 acres. The second land that he was about to pay for that week, he did that soil profile and found out that it was not good. It was the third one that was good and he bought it. So soil test just shows you the new trends in the soil. The soil profile helps you to know if you can plant tree crops. However, however, there are also ways, the new trend that is deficient is available in liquid form now. So it's like taking capsule and injection. So you can apply those nutrients on the leaf of the crop and it absorbs it without going into the soil. So technology has moved on. Thank you very much, sir. Still have more questions. Some are asking here, that what is your suggest that can you please can they access your mentorship program? Okay, so um, I don't do mentorship again. I do coaching. And the difference for me is a coach stays with the player in the field. The players are on the field. So when you are on the field, uh, my time is more valued because I found out that the mentoring around here, they just want people want to be around you. You just talk and talk and talk and they don't take action. So I want people who take action. And so you must have something that you decided you want to do and we can navigate it together. And that's where the joy of, you know, having someone that you're coaching is. So I do coaching. Um, I, I don't do mentoring again. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. But, but I, I can consider on TBWF platform. <laughs> That's so generous of you. Thank you, sir. Um, I have a question here. Someone is asking, do you have schemes that people can invest in? And how much is the minimum sum required per slot or per person? So let me talk general now. And I can narrow in later. So, um, Anything that you want to put money in, because there are many of the platforms now, any of these schemes that you want to put money in and the money is less than 100,000, if they are not selling it in an acre, if it's plot by plot, please reconsider. It doesn't work that way in real field. An acre fine, two and a half acres and beyond. Anything offering one one plot, it will not work. Now, um, depending on anything, uh, depending on the projects at hand per time, that's what will determine the amount. Yes, we do have, we don't, we do, um, 
what we call private placement, but not something public. But what we do is take, for instance, a multinational says they, they need like corn or soya or millet. So we just aggregate people who are interested and maybe we get a big land and you can do that. There's also something that we do called farm for you Farm for you is you outsource the service to us, but it's your farm. Insurance is done in your name. Everything is done for you, but it's your farm. You only, I'll just like companies outsource, um, what's it called? Uh, HR and co. But uh, we will get to that, you know, beyond the platform here. And, and we can help you set it up too. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. I have a question here from Facebook. Someone is asking that um, he, he first mentioned that he's into production of coconut oil and that he would like to know where to get alter, an alternative to coconut, to Ghana coconut. Mm. Yes. Uh, I know I, I want to feel you because since the border closure, about 70% of the coconuts that many entrepreneurs use uh, come from Ghana, Benin. So that border closure is currently affecting your business. So I would ask you to please reconsider your business plan. Like I said, it's good to start small, but you may need to look into the sustainability, which is you may need to encourage people to set up coconut plantations either as their border, as their, um, what's it called? As the fence. But for now, and the way it's looking, you, it's not looking very promising. But I can tell you, you can gradually look into that value chain of selling. So you have those coconuts that people can plant. So selling seedlings to people who want to grow coconuts should be a business you should do. Let me say something from the Bible. Bible says, and Isaac stood in that land and reaped a hundredfold. And after that, what did he do? He went to dig wells. After he dug wells, that is like water business. After water business, Bible says he added livestock, but he produced grains. So he produced the corn they will eat, began to offer water and irrigation and move into livestock. Everything is still linked together. So look at other value chains that you can promote. Thank you very much, sir. Someone is asking when you spoke about salt tests, that does your organization do salt tests or can you recommend someone that does good salt testing? Yes, so we can recommend, we don't do it. We, what we have, um, collaborators and partners that do it. Okay. And um, I have another question here. Someone is asking if that um, he just wants to venture into planting of yam tuber in Abuja. And he would like to ask if it's a good one. So, um, so I'll bring in the family by revelation now, which is, why do you want to do that? It's not that it's bad. It's a good one. But guess what? Very soon, all Abuja is a yam producing environment. Why don't you trade? It's better to trade than to go into the production because you'll be planting when everybody's planting. It will be coming out when everybody's farm is coming out. So why don't you start trading a bit? So by the time the yam comes out, you can scale. It's always cheaper to trade than to produce, except you say you are led into the production. But Etsy, what has helped me thus far beyond my capacity for risk is always wanting to do something different. I will never follow the crowd. I want to say, what next? What are people not doing? You may be adding value. There's an Indian company now that is cutting our yam into chips and selling and we are buying. But can we do that? Yes. There's another organization frying yam. 
and the owner works with Amazon in US and has quite a number of networks here. So consider the value chain that if you're not living in that location, please trade. Trading is better. But, but you can produce if you are wired for it. Thank you very much, sir. And um, I have someone here. We have so many fashion designers amongst us in our ministry. And mm. one of them is asking, can you please shed more light on the aspect of fashion design when you refer to a great business? Yeah. So, um, you know, fashion is quite broad. But one of the things is that exports, there's an Agoa uh, project with the US, almost 20 years, Nigeria has not really done anything, which gives you the opportunity to move uh, products from Nigeria to the US. Fashion is a key area that they are looking into, but we have not tapped into it. So we need to be looking into natural things now. And what do I mean by natural things? Uh, you know, batiks. Batik is premium globally, but we're not paying attention to that. Like I mentioned earlier, buttons. So when they call it natural or environmental friendly buttons, environmental friendly fabrics. So those are, if you Google environmental friendly fabrics, you will see it and you can look into that. Why am I saying that? Because you will, you will do a little and end premium on it. And for the fashion people in the fashion space, they need to begin to look at the value chain now, the value chain for agribusiness. Uh, and so when you look into that, you begin to see areas in which you can diversify in. So someone into fashion can begin to sell B wax because they would use B wax to coat buttons and coat. So fabrics, cotton, there are some types of variety of cotton that fabric people use. So just look in Google about environmental friendly businesses in fashion, and I can tell you there are a lot of them. Thank you very much, sir. One of us is already into packaging, and she's asking where you refer to value chain in that in agri sector. That how can she partner to work with tomato on tomatoes packaging for sales? So I can tell you, please don't narrow on tomato. The world is available for you. You are like Zoom now. You started ahead of everybody, and so right now you. Let me, let me just tell you the story that you know. Noah and the ark. Bible says that Noah built the ark for by 100 year plus, but because the rain, the boundary shore was gonna change, he built ahead, you have started ahead. The water just came to lift the ark of Noah. The sector is open to tomato, corn, name any type of packaging, banana packaging because many people will be going into bananas now. They would, many people will do it right. The foreigners are migrating to Nigeria and that packaging, and you have to niche the packaging. You have to either decide you'll be packaging for final consumers or you'll be packaging for uh, mid-scale uh, people. But uh, let me say this in Yoruba. Uh, there's no, Maybe somebody can help me type that. <laughs> but there's no, there's, there's no period that you will create it that you will not find somebody to embrace it. Thank you very much, sir. I have one of us here. She's asking that herself and her husband, they own a land at Ibejuleki, and um, it's okay. quite vast. I think it's hectares of land. And she said um, they've had it for a while. They don't know what to do on the land. They had done soil tests, but it looks like um, there's no result coming from that. And they really want to know mm. what they can do, how they can partner with farmers. Okay, first thing first, uh, please reach out to us. 
we you would need we need to assess some of the details you have. Um, so the challenge also around here in Nigeria is most of the people who do the soil test don't do the right thing. So when you plan with that, you I've seen people who have done soil tests, they apply the fertilizers and what they adhere to that advice, but it doesn't work. So let's start with that. But I can tell you that if it's in Lagos, Ibeju, you would find we, we can walk around uh, the youths who can cultivate or the farmers. But when you're saying hectares, hectares in those, that area is sizable because there's a high demand, that's the growing part of Lagos. So there should be something uh, that can be sustainably implemented there. there. There is definitely. Thank you very much, sir. I have a question. You, regard, you spoke about tomatoes and um, how, uh, you know, our tomatoes, are, they're seasonal and a lot of waste happens in the process. If one now wants to go into, you know, producing um, tomato paste, out of the fresh tomatoes, preserved it, you know, and then ensures that it is packaged for sale either within Nigeria or export. How can someone go about it? Where can we get machineries that will help with setting up this uh, manufacturing industry, you know, and converting it from the fresh state to a paste that will be different from what we see regularly, that like it will be ready to make as, to make stew with? Yes. So, um, what I said earlier during my presentation is don't look for what is common. Look for a disruption. So everybody is trying to do tomato paste. You cannot compete with dangote. And a couple of Indians are coming. But nobody is producing tomato ketchup. And I tell you, Google tomato ketchup. You, every one of us can do tomato ketchup in the kitchen. So why don't you do tomato ketchup and sell them paste? Because all the, the paste can be reconstituted for some into paste, um, ketchup. So look at all the things, sauce, brand, you know, there are a lot of pepper sauce in the US, UK, started by a small family. So get bottles, do your tomato. And if you go to most of the brand um, eateries, when I say all, I mean all. Now they are branding as if they are repackaging in Nigeria. But I say repackaging, but they are not producing here because they have to import. So, and you can start small in your kitchen and co, or get something fairly sizable. But I can tell you, look at things that are not common because that is where you would have that leverage on. So paste is good, but I, I've done a couple of projects on the Dangote tomato in Kano. <laughs> the factory is massive across Africa. You can't compete with pricing. So please pay attention. Thank you very much, sir. Someone is asking here that um, she has gone into farming and she planted her crops. However, she says she experienced theft and that she would like mm. to, she'd like you to counsel her on what next can she do to avoid this? So, like I said, don't do anything common. So if you get to a new location and all they are planting is corn, plant watermelon, provided there's a market. Do opposite of what they are doing so that it's not appealing. And if that may not be applicable, take the people from the surrounding and engage them as the security. If you don't engage them as the security, it's like putting the goat in care of the lion. The lion will not eat the goat. But if the goat is roaming, that is so yeah for the lion. So engage the people around as your security and or engage them as partners. So you may not need to farm. You may need to get them, fund them to farm and tie the rewards to productivity. 
And that way, you're sure that things will not get stolen again. Thank you so much, sir. Someone is asking about fish farming. She would like to mm. go into fish farming and um, precisely catfish. She would like you to counsel her, sir. So, except you tell me you slept and one old man with white beard showed up and told you, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter, catfish, catfish is the next way to go. Please reconsider. Why? Because ev almost everybody going into business of fish is doing catfish. So, like I said again, if you're doing something that everybody is doing, that means there's low barrier to entry. And the day a politician steps into it, a politician called me in January and said, I want to put, my friend has put 150 million in rice. I've gotten land, I want to put 350 million. So if they put 350 million in catfish around your farm, I'm sure you know you won't be able to sell. But you can add value to catfish. There's catfish fillets, catfish oil. There are a lot of things you, you can even, you know, when my wife was working in the bank, there's this professor who brought big catfish that was spiced and, you know, they used to use it to take gari. And so I always went to the bank around when they are taking the gari, you know. So bottom line is that look at that or look at other types of fish. There are many types of fish that do well in our waters that sell. And I can say, you may don't even start by going to dig a pond. There are many people who have burnt their hands in catfish or in any fish business that the ponds are waiting. Either they ran ahead of God or they could not manage or they have been using it the people are old now, the owners are old, and none of their children, they're willing. So you can leave it for a long time. And so instead of investing money in the uh, facility that will be uh, redundant, you can just have working capital and lease. Thank you very much, sir. Um, still have a few questions to go before we round up today. Someone is asking, is there a possibility of recycling vegetables? Recycling vegetables? Well, the only recycling we know now is converting it to, into organic manure. Um, but outside that, no, or, or um, to produce like biogas waste, outside, outside that, no. Because when you say recycling, some vegetables, they extract some nutrients from them, but those are not uh, easy things to do. You need some very sophisticated equipment to be able to do that. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, we are, our time is fast spent. I would like to take this last question before we we'll now invite, uh, go to the next session as we round off. Someone is asking about snail farming. Where can she do training and what are the prospects in snail farming? So snail farming is huge. We have a couple of people uh, who work with us. And I also did my project in school and did snails for many years. So now you find a lot of women, you know, for the average woman, our face is an asset. And she will do anything to protect the face. So the slime of snails is imported into the country now, well packaged. So that slime, the meat, the shell. So those value chains. So I would say if you're going to do snail business, don't go into it for meat. Go into it for the, uh, for the slime because you can add small value here and sell local as against going after um, beef. So they say, if you hunt, for tigers in rabbit territory, you will kill many rabbits. But if you hunt for rabbits in tiger territory, you will become meal or lunch for the tiger. So look at what has a bigger market size and others will just be accessories. 
Thank you very much, African farmer. We have really been blessed. You've been so generous. We have learned. You have opened our eyes to so many opportunities. We are grateful. Thank you so much. For as many of us that are blessed, I'd like you to go to the chat room now and begin to appreciate our speaker for today. Thank you so much, sir. And as we round up, can you please um, also celebrate with me as we welcome Pastor Mayo Kung Oriofe for putting this together. Thank you. You are muted, ma'am. Can you hear me? 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 Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, ma'am. Okay. 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 We have been blessed by African Farmer Session. Let's join our hands together. There's an echo, ma'am. Yeah, that's what I want. Can you hear me now? Let's celebrate African farmer, Mr. Folumogadji. You have been blessed going to the chat room and celebrate him again. That was awesome. Mr. Mogadji, I'm so proud of you. You know you are my person. Thank you for that depth of sharing and that depth of you know information. We're so grateful. And then we're very grateful um, for your magnanimity to say that you'll be sharing your slides with us. That's so wonderful of you. Um, I also want to add the offer for mentoring. I am not for it. This is not something that you will naturally do. If you do it, you do it at your discretion. You said you were going to do it because it's TBWF, but I back off. I beg to back off because I share your views. Everybody, mentoring is about hanging around people now. It's not really about taking action. So if it is coaching that you are comfortable with, please go ahead and coach our people. But for mentoring, it doesn't have my backing. I'm sorry to say that, but that's the way it is, okay? Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure that very soon, we'll need to call on you again to package stuff for our people. God bless you, my love to Tokumbo and the kids. Thank you. If you have been blessed today again, let me see you jam your hands together, show some excitement, type your experience. Type your experience. I need to wear my glasses to read. Go ahead, type your experience. How has it been today? Is somebody going into farming right away? Is somebody jumping into it? Somebody starting a, an estate, um, what do they call it, village markets? Anybody going for that? Okay, somebody has land somewhere. We are starting to the farming now. Is somebody exporting Ugu? Wow, there's so much to do. May God give us grace. May the Lord breathe upon what we have heard this afternoon. And may you be able to identify your own portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you everybody for joining this session. We have another fringe session by two o'clock this afternoon. We're going to be um, dealing with the sector of the makeup artist and the cosmetic industry. So please go to town and bring everybody in that space or anyone who wants to get in there. Like I advised on Tuesday, I don't think any of the free sessions, I mean, you should leave it out. You should come in and see how you can, you know, partake of all of these things. For instance, I am so interested in the sales of cosmetics. I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I want to sell, but I think that is really, um, a new normal now is really going to make waves because a lot of people want to own, you know, their own makeup kits. As for women, we can't do without this makeup, really and truly. It has become a part of us. And so that's a, a huge industry that I think people should step into. 
So even if you think you are not a makeup artist or whatever, you don't even like makeup, but I think you can make good money from it. I remember this um, slogan or the tagline, or now I'm sure you know people I'm talking about, the whole baking room, the money of shit does not smell. So the guy was making money from people's um, waste. Okay, so I'm sure you can sell makeup products and you will make good money as one of your streams of income. So join us by 2 p.m. as we have a special guest to speak to us. We'll see you by 2. Thank you very much for joining. God bless you. Have a wonderful time.